hello. So today I want to talk to you guys about everything I read in the month of November. And oh my God, November was such a great reading month for me. I think it's because I did not pressure myself ever to read when I wasn't in the mood, which resulted in reading less books, but I still read a ton this month. While the number of pages in books I read is drastically lower than last month, it is more on par to what I was reading at the very beginning of the year when I was really in a comfortable place with my reading. Let's get into some statistics first. In the month of November, I read nine and a half books. Actually, I read half of a different book, so it's more like nine because I finished half of one I had already started and I started another half. Anyways, one of these was a fantasy, one was magical realism, two were sci-fi, and five were literary fiction. Eight books were in the adult genre and one was in the young adult category. I listened to five of the books through audiobook format and I read physically the paperback or hardcover four of the books. Now this month is way better because six books were written by female authors and three were written by male authors. So definitely a little bit more towards my goal, which makes me super happy. When it comes to ratings, my average rating for the month was a 4.27 out of five stars, which is excellent. I had three 3.75 star books, one four star book, one 4.25 star book, two 4.5 star books, and two five star books. So when it comes to the number of pages that I listened to through audiobooks, it was 2,764 pages, while the pages I physically read were 1,697 for a total of 4,461 pages. And when you do the math, it comes out to about the average book being 469 pages. So let's quickly talk about the half books that I started and finished in the month of November. The one that I read half of, so a whopping 660 pages, I'm on chapter 59, is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. And I listened to the half of this book that I did read. My experience with this book so far has had some ups and downs. So I was very interested in it when it started out and we were following our main character as he is set up for treason and wrongfully imprisoned and his escape from prison. I found all of that very fascinating. I thought the writing was very accessible. I was having a great time until we got to like 25 to 30% of the way through it. And after he escapes prison, I sort of found myself plateauing and not caring as much about the story. And then it really dipped down because there were so many new characters introduced, so many different things I wasn't really caring about anymore that I needed to take a break because I'm already 660 pages in. I'm halfway through this book. Actually, I'm over half and I just needed to set it down. I, uh, I will take that accomplishment reading half of The Count of Monte Cristo in the month of November is fine by me. Um, I do plan to finish it. I'm not DNFing it. I just don't know exactly when I will finish the second half because I know I need to wait until I'm in the right mood so I don't hate read this. But leave me your thoughts in the comments about the second half of this book. I honestly wish that I had went the abridged route for this book because I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I've had several of you guys tell me that you recommend abridged versions for me. Um, several friends have said this at this point because of my experience with reading extremely long books and thinking that they were too long-winded. Let's talk about the other book next that is the book that I finished. So when it comes to pages counted, I only counted half of these pages since that is what I read in November and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And I gave this a four out of five stars. This is the perfect example of why I DNF books because I was not having a good time reading it previously when I DNF'd it and I knew I wanted to get back to it at the right time. I waited until I was in the mood for this type of read and this type of story and then I really enjoyed it. Once I got past that second half, I couldn't put it down. I had to keep reading. I fell in love with the characters. If you are unfamiliar with this story, we're following these characters at this English boarding school and they're sort of very isolated from the rest of the world here. They don't really know what's happening. They just know that this is life around them. They have to create these like art projects to turn in, but they're not really allowed to have contact with the outside world. I don't want to say more than that if you don't know what the students are actually doing there. I don't want to spoil that for you. I 
will say I did watch the adaptation for this and I do not like uh, bleak movies so I didn't enjoy the adaptation but I greatly enjoyed the book. I cared so deeply by the end for the characters and some of them that I hated. I even found myself having sympathy for. When I wasn't in the mood I found the writing very clunky almost but then when I was in the proper mood to read this I thought the writing was beautiful in a simplistic way. I'm very glad I continued on with this and I'm very excited to pick up. I think I'll do The Remains of the Day next by the same author, but anyways, gave this a four out of five stars and if it sounds interesting, I definitely recommend it. Okay, the first thing that I finished in the month of November is The Ninth Rain by Jen Williams. This is a fantasy novel with some like sci-fi elements, some maybe like horror elements. It is a fast paced, fun, time I enjoyed my reading experience from start to finish. So while I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars, I still highly recommend it. I did rate it a bit lower. I mean, that is still a good book rating for me, but it just wasn't wowing me. There was nothing like super new or inventive. I know that this book has a lot of tropes that we've seen before with a new twist and spin on them, which I enjoyed, but I definitely like didn't fall in love with any of the characters. I think that's my biggest complaint is while I liked the characters and found them adequate, they didn't stand out to me and I felt like I've read them before. What I did love in this book is is the world building. There's a lot of like sci-fi elements. There's really cool like animal companion type of elements in this too. There's witches. There are characters that have like vampire type of qualities, but feel cooler. It doesn't feel like a paranormal type of vampire story. They just need blood. You can ride on bats. So basically we're following a couple different groups of main characters trying to figure out why the magic from this tree god is gone and how to basically save this race of people from dying because the tree god helped prolong their lives. So we're following like an explorer, human character, a witch who has escaped from imprisonment and one of the vampire type of creatures as well. Those are like our main characters. So if you want something unique to fantasy as far as it doesn't feel like a typical fantasy story, then I would pick this up. It's just like a an easy, it's a very accessible, easy fantasy read with some cool horror and sci-fi elements. And I really encourage you to pick it up if it sounds interesting because like I said, I couldn't put it down and every time, like there was not one second that I was bored reading this. I know I'll read The Bitter Twins. I have it on my shelf over there. I don't know when I'll get to it, but it was a fun time. The next book that I finished in November has quickly become a favorite book of all time for me, and that is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. I can see why this book is so well loved by so many people. Um, this book was absolute perfection in my opinion. We are following this group of friends. The timeline is later on in life, like I think more in like 30s and 40s, but we get lots of flashbacks from college age when they were all best friends and going to school. We get flashbacks from childhood for some of them. This book will rip your heart out and stomp on it. She does not care about your feelings when she is writing this story. It is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful, gut-wrenching. I mean, I finished this book and I was like, I'm not okay. Um, and I really want to say I strongly disagree with everybody who says that it's not realistic and the people that say that it's just every horrible thing you can imagine for the sake of that happening. Like, I'm happy that you don't know people in your life that have had terrible things happen to them from their entire living experience, but I definitely think there are people out there who go through things like this, and I, I do think that this is a realistic story. All of these friends are just extremely successful people in life as far as their careers go, but I've never read about a group of characters that felt more fleshed out, that felt more realistic, more flawed and lovable and, human like just the human relatable aspect you go there with these characters thoughts with thinking things that people wouldn't like to admit and you absolutely will fall in love with them so i'm gonna stop there i don't think this book has any flaws literally none i think it is perfection and it is one of my favorite books i've ever read in my whole life once i finished listening to the audiobook for this which i do recommend by the way i was just like 
I don't know what to do with my life now. Maybe I should immediately start this book back over and this will not be the last time that I read this book, that is for sure. Right after I finished A Little Life, I picked up the audiobook for The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Desha Filia. So this is a short story collection of black women and their religious and familial relationship. I'm gonna read this. It says, it explores the raw and tender places where black women and girls dare to follow their desires and pursue a momentary reprieve from being good. The nine stories in this collection feature four generations of characters grappling with who they want to be in the world, caught as they are between the church's double standards and their own needs and passions. So if you enjoy themes of religion, especially if you have like any history experience um, with struggling with religion, I think that you'll really enjoy this because it's a very once again, like human experience and watching these women and girls as they struggle with who they think they're supposed to be and who they want to be, not knowing exactly where that fits in, the fear of judgment from others, um, the fear of judgment from family and not being accepted, but knowing that you don't want the life of the path that you're sort of put on. So um, it's a very short audiobook. I really enjoyed the audiobook for this as well. But since I do love books discussing religion, I had a great time listening to this. I did give this a four out of five stars as well and definitely recommend it if it sounds like something you'd like. The next thing that I picked up is the young adult book, which is questionable in my opinion because I've seen some argument, but I saw it categorized as that it is Binti, uh, the Binti trilogy by Nnedi Okorafor. And I would argue that this doesn't read like young adult in my opinion. There are very few young adult books that I'm able to read and enjoy at this period in my life. So I did give this a 3.75 out of five stars as a whole. So that's kind of judging all of the novellas together since I read them that way. I absolutely love this beautiful bind up and I cannot wait to read more from Nnedi Okorafor. We're following our main character Binti as she gets this chance to go to this university. It's She has to like travel through space to get there. She's very good at math, but her ship is attacked by the Medusa on the way there. She's the only survivor, so she has to learn to live with this crew that attacked the ship. And it's sort of taking a look at the warring and fighting between these two groups of people over time and how Binti can bring these two groups together and be like a peacemaker. But it is so much more than that. And the reason that I fell in love with this trilogy of novellas is because of Nnedi Okorafor's writing. I think she was able to really hit on so many important themes and topics throughout this book in a very subtle, natural way. And you would think, okay, this is three novellas and it's less than 300 pages. Well, it's just over 300 pages. So you would think that, you know, it could focus on like one or two. No, she she discusses so many things, whether that is war or like a form of racism or um, heritage and appreciating where you come from and culture, um, anxiety, coping mechanisms. She uses math to deal with her anxiety a lot, math and numbers, learning about people who are different from you. There are so many things that were touched upon just in a natural way. So my favorite out of the three novellas was definitely Home. I enjoyed Binti, the first novella, and then Home was my favorite and The Night Masquerade was my least favorite. I just don't think I loved quite as much where the story went in the third one, but now I'm dying to pick up more by this author. I did listen to the audiobook for this and the narrator did a phenomenal job. So if you can get your hands on the audio book version, I definitely recommend that, but I love the writing. I was immediately drawn in. I could not stop listening to it. It was something I always wanted to return to. So I'm just happy because I'm really shocked because of it being young adult and I just really didn't know what to expect because when everyone else was reading this and it was really super popular, I just wasn't interested. So I really didn't listen to a lot of the buzz around it. And I'm really happy that I found a new author that I think I will love. So pick this up if you're interested. Okay, the next book I finished that I physically read was Revelation Space by Alistair Reynolds. I gave this a 4.5 out of five stars. I was completely shocked by how much I loved this book. I picked it up because it's part of the SF Masterworks project that I'm doing and I thought, you know, it must be good, let's give it a go. And I was completely 
wowed by this book. It's kind of difficult to explain because his writing is very all over the place as far as the timeline goes and that can make it a bit tricky. But we're following like three groups of people for the most part. We have our main character Dan Sylvest who is doing this like archaeological dig to find out about this alien race that has something buried we need to uncover to learn more about them because they've basically been wiped out and it's Dan's mission to figure out what happened to them. And everything with that alien race is not as it seems. Next, we're following this group aboard a large ship that can travel between planets. And they are on a mission to find Sylvest because they need help with one of their crew members. And he's like one of the only ones that can help them. The last person that we're following is a hired assassin and I don't want to say more than that. So we really change POVs very frequently, especially within each chapter. And I love that because it keeps you wanting more. It keeps you on the edge of your seat and excited to find out and learn. Now, when it comes to the sci-fi aspects of this, we don't travel faster than the speed of light in this, which is very different from a lot of other space opera sci-fi books. Um, so that definitely plays a role here, but there are so many cool sci-fi aspects in like the world building that are brought into this. Cool things about modifications that human beings have done to themselves or just about other alien races, about different technology, um, even the ships themselves or like <laughs> different things that are a part of the ship. And so it is not overly complex, but I will say that a lot of the time you feel very confused and I think that's a pretty common complaint. However, I have heard from others that he sort of narrows his focus a bit as he continues on in the trilogy. So I would definitely love to continue on with this. I think that the reason I didn't give it a full five stars is because of that confusion. And at times, I don't know if I was just meant to not fully understand or if the scientific jargon was above my knowledge or if it just wasn't fleshed out enough for me to understand and I was supposed to. So that is most of the reason why um, I would say that people probably think the characters in this are unlikable. I love unlikable characters, so that was not a drawback for me. I really enjoyed all of the characters in this a lot and I found them to be satisfactory, not really lacking in any way. So I didn't have a problem with the characters. Um, I just think it was a lot going on in one book. It is rather long. It's almost 600 pages. So I don't think this is a good place to start with sci-fi if you're not familiar with the genre. But if you are familiar with the sci-fi genre and you enjoy space operas, I would say pick this the heck up because I hear no one talking about it and I feel like more people should be reading it because of how great it is. Okay, the next thing I picked up on audio after I decided to put down the Count of Monte Cristo is The Night Watchman by Louise Erdrich, which is a Pulitzer Prize winner. And I give this a 4.5 out of five stars. I really enjoyed this book very much. This is a story actually that Louise Erdrich wrote that's based on her grandfather. Um, his name was Patrick Gournay who carried the fight against native dispossession from rural North Dakota to Washington, DC. So while it is a fictional story, it is based on some events that occurred in her grandfather's life. So I think that I was so shocked by this because it's not that I don't care about the events that were happening in this book, but I found myself shocked at how much I was invested in the characters as this was happening. Now, the author definitely has a lot she wants to say about what is happening on the reservation and with the Native Americans, but it's not in your face. It's not over the top. It's not taking away from everything else in the story. It's just more so a part of what's going on here. So we're following Thomas and his storyline in this is the one that is more so fighting against this emancipation bill and he's trying to learn and understand what's happening and he wants to do everything he can to prevent people from taking away their land because they've already done so in the past and they keep shrinking them smaller and smaller of what is their own. So it's his goal to go to Congress and stop this from happening. Then we're also following Patrice and she works at this plant and she has like some romantic interests 
in this. She has this mission to find her sister and figure out what happened with her and where she could be and to take care of her child. So we're dealing with a lot of really heavy subject matter throughout this, but it's presented in a way that if you are sensitive to a lot of different topics, I think you'd be okay reading it. So overall, I just wanted there to be a little bit more expansion upon the conclusion of this book, the conclusion of the outcome of what happened with Thomas and this bill and also Patrice and her romantic relationship and her relationship with his, her sister. So I actually am glad that this was like just under 450 pages. I mean, I think it was a great length, but I just wish we had maybe 20 more pages, I suppose, of expansion upon those things. And then I would have rated it a bit higher, but the sense of characters in this place, in this community felt so real and so well established. Everything was believable and I was just so invested in it by the end. So like I said, if you can get your hands on the audiobook, I highly recommend that. But this was a great literary fiction pick for me. I can't wait to read more things like this and read more by this author. Two more to go. The next is the magical realism novel that I gave a five out of five stars to and that is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I was very worried going into this. I didn't know what to expect. I know it has a lot of high praise. Uh, let me just say that this is definitely my favorite classic I've ever read in my whole life if this is considered a classic because it was absolutely beautiful. Can you see all of those tabs? Like all the pages I dog-eared, it's like nearly every other page. And I'm definitely going to reread and annotate this one day. Um, we are following the Buendia family in Macondo and we're following many generations of this family. It is a bit confusing because everyone has the same name, which um, there's a lot of really cool themes discussed and there's a lot to unpack and discuss, which is why we had a great live show and Patreon for it. So obviously a lot can be said about the solitude, the elitism, the incest, the isolation with this family in Macondo. There's also a lot of nods to Colombian history, to different cultural significance. Like I said, the, the historical events referenced in this doesn't make it feel like a historical fiction novel. It's not. They are not 100% accurate how they occurred in history, but they are nods to that to where you can go and research them more, which I found very fascinating to learn about these things. Um, the characters are almost all detestable in this book. I mean, all but maybe like one, and I loved reading about them. The writing style was some of my favorite writing I've ever read in my whole life. It is absolutely beautiful. And when I see a page like this, nearly all text with no break, that terrifies me. That's pretty much how the entire book is. Just block of text after block of text and no break. And it was beautiful. The sentences are extremely long. The way he chooses to word things is beautiful and sometimes humorous. So the mix of the beautiful writing style with the inclusion of being a ideas and themes based story is why I love it so much. You guys know that is what I look for when I'm reading. I'm not a character driven reader. I'm not a plot driven reader or an action reader. I'm an ideas and themes type of reader. And that's what this book is about. And it was just absolutely brilliant. I could probably talk about it for another hour, even though we just talked about it for an hour last night. I cannot wait to reread and annotate this. As I said, there's just so much going on in this book. And the reason that I love the genre of magical realism and it is so present in this is the way that you're just meant to accept these absolutely wild things that are happening and they're just stated so casually uh, about what's happening and you're like oh, okay all right that's what's going on we need to accept it and move on and I just absolutely I love it. I had the best time. It took me a while to read, probably took me like two weeks to read, but I don't mind that at all. Like I just think that it was absolutely beautiful. After doing like tons and tons and tons of reading about the book in Gabriel Garcia Marquez um, and seeing sort of what he meant to accomplish by turning things upside down and trying to make people see things and believe things without having the truth and facts and history behind it, I think is really amazing at what he did for the genre. And I can't wait to read more by this author. So if you guys have a suggestion of what to read next, 
please let me know. And if you love this book as much as me, let's gush about it in the comments. And last but not least, I decided to listen to with two days left in the month is Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. I do still need to read Migrations, which I originally wanted to read first. However, this came in through the library first. So in this book, we're following Inti and her sister Aggie as they are in Scotland reintroducing wolves into the remote highlands. So they are trying to restore the landscape. The one thing, I can't remember the term that's used in this book, but it's like mirror touch or something like that where Inti, our main character, can feel the pain of others. Any creature or human being, um, not just pain, she feels anything that they feel. And being such an empath myself, I loved seeing that like magical realism aspect, that bit of representation, I thought was so unique in the way that it was done. Um, this book is also hard to read as a vegan with killing animals and knowing that, okay, these wolves have to be reintroduced into the highlands in order to kill the deer because the deer are overrunning everything and therefore ruining the landscape. And like, that's just how nature works. And that's the sucky part of, you know, uh, death and death is a necessity in life. Some of those things weren't the easiest to read, but I loved the importance that this book focused on with the environment, environmental changes, um, human impact on ecology and animals in general. I think that it was a very like surface level discussion on that, but it still was enough because this is under 300 pages. I suppose I should have said I gave this a 4.25 out of five stars because it did focus very heavily on a murder mystery and I don't love mysteries at all. It's not that it was done poorly, it's just that's not what I prefer to read. And so I didn't love trying to figure out about the mystery, it just didn't care as much. Also, there's a pretty heavy focus on a romantic relationship for the latter half of the novel, and I don't like romance either, so that brought it down a bit. But two elements that I really don't like, mysteries and romance, and it's still got a 4.25 out of five stars, so that's really saying a lot because overall the themes of the book are something that I really truly care about. And I think that the way the author described her form of being an empath with being able to feel other creatures and humans pain was really beautiful and very original compared to a lot of other things I've seen. So if you are interested in this, I recommend it. It was a great audiobook, by the way. This is one that I did listen to and definitely recommend. So those are the nine things that I read in the month of November. Overall, fabulous reading month. I could not be more pleased with everything I read. I feel like I am starting my path of reading very diversely and I wanna keep it that way. I'm very excited about it. So let me know if you guys have read any of these books. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments about them and tell me what did you read in the month of November and we can talk about it more there. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.